Good morning, good morning, good morning again. It's another glorious day, and I want to read something. This is probably going to be really short. Who knows, though? Psalm 67, a wonderful scripture. It says, May God be gracious to us and bless us, and cause his face to shine on us. Selah. May God be gracious to us and bless us. Sometimes you read this or you hear someone say that and you think, well, that's awfully selfish. You know, just me, 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 me. Bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Well, I didn't write this. This is, you know, some script, some uh, books. Actually, mine says it too. The Holy, the Holy Bible. The Set Apart Bible. God's Word. May God be gracious to us and bless us and cause his face to shine on us. It is perfectly good to pray that. To declare that, to call for that. Say, God, be gracious to me and bless me. Cause your face to shine on me. It is good to seek the favor of the living God. But there is an outcome to that, to that calling. It's not just, oh, goody, goody, gumdrops. I get lots of fun stuff. Verse 2 says, that your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. You're gracious to me, O oh God. May God be gracious to us that your way may be known on earth, that your salvation, your deliverance may be known among all nations. We want the word to run and be glorified. We want everybody to turn to the living God. God be gracious to us and bless us. Living in the, the mully grubs, in the slums of life, is not a, uh, a conduit for his way to be known in all the earth. No, his graciousness, his grace, and his face shining upon us, that is what leads to his way being known on all the earth, known on earth, and his salvation among all nations. Verse 3, Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. O, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. This is a now and a prophetic statement here for you will judge the people uprightly you know judgment is a separation i've heard it said uh when you take in beans if you went had a garden and you pull all the beans you pluck them all and you put them in a basket and then you go sit down and now you're going to judge the beans this is a good bean this is a bad bean this is a good bean this is a bad bean god judging the people uprightly he says hey You've been, uh, you've been a bad bunny. <laughs> that comes from Veggie Tales, but you've been bad. This is bad. I got to judge. There is a time where judgment comes, and the judgment is good because some cases he says, This is good. You've been good. You've done good. You've walked uprightly. And he judges and he separates. He places one in the good pile and one in the bad pile and deals with them. For you will judge the people uprightly. And lead the nations on earth. He is not an agnostic God. He's not distant. He's not gone. He's not ignoring us. But there is a specific time. There are times and there is a time for judgment. He will judge the people uprightly. And lead the nations on earth. The living God will lead the nations on earth. Selah, he says again. It means think about it. Pause. Let's take a... Uh, a poetic pause to ponder what he just said. Verse 5, let the people praise you, O God. Again, let all the people praise you. Then the earth, or excuse me, then will the earth yield its produce. Now we've gone through this. He blesses us. Salvation is known. He leads the nations. The people praise him. Verse 6, then will the earth yield its produce. I submit to you that we have not yet seen all the awesome things that God has created inside, locked up in the earth to produce. We talk about the wonders of modern science and all the, the farming techniques and you add nitrogen to the soil and etc., etc., etc. And some of it seems to have been good and some of it's just a big load of hooey that is causing uh, bad things as well. There's good uh, good in what God teaches us. There's bad in the kind of junk that we 
try and squeeze out of the earth, you know, the kind of manipulation we look into it, or we, we try to uh, create it, excuse me, those words didn't come out right. But he says, then the er will the earth yield its produce, and God, our God, will bless us. I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to the actual blessing of the Lord and the earth yielding its produce. The wonderful, abundant bounty God has produ pro uh, provided in the earth. I'm looking for it. There isn't a limit. We can think there's a limit. It's when you don't know, you don't know. When you don't know how much there is, how much abundance there can be, you just don't know. Part of it's ignorance. Part of it might be just arrogance. But we know that God says the earth will yield its produce. And God, our God, will bless us. In verse 7, God will bless us and all the ends of the earth will fear him. Everyone's going to see how mighty God is. And they're going to fear him, not be like, ah. I mean, there, there is something to that being, oh, God, we fear you. But fear him as in revere him, come to him, bow before him and submit to him. Amen. Be blessed.